Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and just make a quick like tutorial video and kind of explaining the bandit rewards and kind of explaining I guess you could say like how to know what bandit to choose for what type of build because it's actually very easy um, to essentially figure it out. And today we're also going to be joined by a special guest named Mini K as you can see him chilling here. Uh, I actually may be giving up my cat in the next like two weeks or so. That's for like another video I'll put out essentially because uh, I haven't gotten any sleep because of this fella in like six months. He's very needy. <laughs> anyway though, uh, so let's talk about these bandits, right? So essentially the way bandits work if you guys are new to the game is you have three bandit rewards. You get um, a reward in normal, you get a reward in cruel, and you get a reward in merciless. And if you type slash passives on your character, you can actually see it right here, deal with the bandits, and it'll have a check on each one if you have completed through with it. So in normal difficulty, you have the option of 40 maximum life. Now note that this adds to your base life, which is then scaled off percentages such as increased maximum life. Um, you can also grab all elemental resistance, maximum mana, and you can always choose to opt out and kill every single bandit, uh, which gives you a permanent plus one skill point. So let's talk about the normal difficulties. Well, in terms of 40 base life, this essentially is going to be beneficial for any character you play with that's, that's essentially life-based. So any character you play that is going to be life-based, there is absolutely nothing harmful about taking 40 base life. It will help you in pretty much every character you play, unless your goal is to not take any life nodes and not scale maximum life. 10% to all elemental resistances. Back in the past, this used to be an okay thing to take on like low life characters that are extremely demanding on um, essentially like resistances. However, with the introduction of jewels, this is pretty useless. So an example, this is 10% to all elemental resistance. Um, I spent one point for this jewel socket and it gives me maximum ES all resistance and fire damage so I personally don't really ever see a need to take all elemental resistance um, and 60 base mana I believe this could work for mana guardian supports I'm not too sure on that because maybe one point is actually better I don't actually know a hundred percent but this is an extremely niche point that most players that play this game are probably never gonna end up essentially taking. So a quick summary for this would be if you're in normal difficulty, if you play a life based build, help Oak. If you're playing anything else, kill all for the passive point because this passive point will easily outweigh this and in most scenarios you don't need mana on any characters because it's just reserved for auras and whatnot, right? Next up is going to be cruel difficulty where you take 16% increased physical damage from Oak, 8% attack speed from Creighton, or 5% cast speed from Lyra. So let's talk about the physical damage first. Now, I don't really have too much to say um, with these three because in Cruel Difficulty, uh, I usually am playing like, I don't know, a Summoner or a, um, what, else, what else have I been playing recently? Like a Trapper or something. And these literally don't work for me at all for my playstyle. So I usually go with a passive skill point. Now in 99, if not 100% of builds, you could take a passive skill point here and you'll be totally fine. 5% uh, cast speed versus a passive skill point, almost the same exact thing. So it's, you know, if you're playing like budget characters, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I personally always favor the plus one sk uh, passive skill point. The exception to this is the 8% attack speed, which I think scales really well for movement skills and whatnot. Um, if you want an example, a 20% quality faster attacks gives 10% attack speed, I, I believe. Maybe, I'm, maybe it's 20%. Pretty sure it's 10%. Um, Calling Strike, I know for a fact, is 10% increased attack speed. A lot of skill gems have increased attack speed unless they change them um, for attacks. So this is like an okay node to get. And again, it, it's essentially just mobility, movement speed, uh, and you could even categorize it as damage if you need attack speed. The 16% Fizz, I'm going to be completely honest with you, physical damage does not double dip with anything, so I typically stay away from it. Uh, of course, if you're playing a physical build or whatnot, it's okay to grab. 16% is above average for a point on the tree, I believe, but there's also nothing wrong with just killing and taking a passive point. Um, so that's something to take into account as well. Now, this cruel difficulty is usually for attack-based characters where they essentially will have to decide between physical attack speed or passive point. So anyway, let's move on to Merciless, but again, for the quick recap, um, cast speed for casters if you want, attack speed fizz doesn't really matter that much. Attack speed probably is better for clear speed and you've got your passive point. So for Merciless, this is an also like super, super, super easy one. Um, 
you basically get plus one to max charge per character that you are well not per character but depending on which one you want there's three charges in the game endurance charges will give you physical mitigation and elemental resistance per endurance charge um, which we can see right here frenzy charges would give you a four percent attack speed um, and cast speed per frenzy charge they also give you four percent more damage more is a multiplier uh, more also is a double dip mechanic for things like ignite and poison and whatnot so that's one thing to take into account and all this double dipping nonsense should be fixed anyway in like three to four months uh, with the expansion but I feel like it's still important to bring it up and then power charges will give you 50% increased critical chance per power charge and this is global so it works for spells and attacks now one thing to kind of note with these is you can get additional effects on your your charges depending on your ascendancy that you play for example juggernaut would get like the increased damage per endurance charge raider could get additional steroids per frenzy charge and assassin could get base power or sorry base critical chance and crit multi per power charge which would make those classes favor the merciless rewards more than other builds now um simply put it's very simple if your build uses frenzy charge take frenzy if your build uses power charge take power if your build uses endurance charges take endurance charges interesting note on endurance charges though is that it takes you two points to pick up a charge so if you're going to plan on using enduring cry and this is kind of like my personal thing that i do if you plan on using enduring cry with your build you might as well just get an endurance charge because it just makes you a little bit more tanky um, and I kind of prefer it for that. Also for people who do Castle Damage Taken Immortal Call, it just adds a little bit of a duration onto your Immortal Call. But in the same end, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just taking a passive point because overall, this is three passive points, right? Well, you, yeah, this is three passive points depending on this, you know, what you take. And some clusters, it just takes three passives like to get a cluster. So for example, uh, Skittering Runes would be three, right? Dynamo is two. Uh, jewel Sockets are one to two. Sometimes you do three points for a Jewel Socket. And dominable would be three points so you can see that by not essentially um helping any of the bandits and just killing them every single time you essentially get an extra cluster or an extra like notable on the tree which really in my opinion is not that bad of a choice so you don't really have to worry too much about bandits now if you do decide to uh refund something if you're still low level it's honestly better to just make a new character because if you fuck something up on here and you pick the wrong reward you are going to have to spend 20 regret orbs to change your decision and that can be quite expensive for new players uh, and simply put you could it, it's not that much of a change it's just like one note um, so sometimes it's often better just make a new character anyway that's pretty much about it I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little rundown of the bandits and hopefully this helps a bit of the newer players um, of course if you have anything you disagree with feel free to type it in the comments below now please understand that there are always going to be extremely niche builds that could use I mean pretty much anything so it's hard to always bring up like a niche niche example i'd prefer to cover you know the general content for a bunch of players but anyway like i said hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please feel free to like share and subscribe and remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv box hope you guys have a wonderful time and i'll see you guys all tomorrow take care everybody